Hey there, Nick Junitakis here. In this video, we're going to go over an ES build plugin that I just created called ES build copy static files. So throughout this video, we're going to go over a couple of use cases of why you might want to use this plugin, as well as take a look at a couple of different web apps that are using ES build, and we'll go over how to use and configure the plugin. Lastly, we're going to go over the source code itself to the plugin, just so you can see how to develop your own ES build plugin if you choose to do so, because really it wasn't that bad. So before we start getting into the readme file and start going over the why and everything like that, I think it may actually go make a little bit more sense to take a look here at some source code. So I have a whole bunch of different Dockerized example web apps that are all using ES build. So I have some for Flash, Django, Rails, Phoenix, Node, and Play, and I've updated all of them to use ES build. And most of them have a very similar directory structure. So before we get into looking at some code here for ES build, like you know the config file, let's just go over this directory structure here. And also keep in mind that if your directory structure is different, then you can configure this plugin to use a different source and destination directory. And we're gonna define what those source and dest destination directories are right now. So in this Flask application, I have an assets directory, and this is where my ES build config is, as well as all of my inputs. So inputs in, in the sense that this is where uh, all of my uh, JavaScript and CSS and other static files here as well are all located. And, you know, this is the JavaScript that I would write if I'm going to be adding some JavaScript, or maybe I want to import Tailwind because I happen to be using Tailwind here. But if you're using Bootstrap, that's also totally fine. Uh, none of this stuff really matters for the sake of using this plugin for ES build. It's going to work the same for both. But yes, yeah, so this is where I would go. All my front end code is here, including the static files that we just took a look at here. You know, that could be things like a robots.txt file, fav icon, a couple different variants for that, perhaps, uh, you know, your business's logo, in this case, like a flask.png file. And this output directory, the public one, is where the output of this input comes to after being processed by ES build, or maybe Tailwind CLI if you're using Tailwind, or maybe uh, the SAS CLI if you're using Bootstrap. So yeah, this public directory, same deal here. This is uh, you know potentially your minified or bundled files, uh, depending if you're running in production or not, as well as these static files. And you know these static files didn't just magically make their way to here through ES build. Like that's where this plugin comes into play. So this plugin will allow you to define an input directory of where your static files are. Again, it doesn't need to be named this. It could be whatever you want. And then anytime that ES build uh, watch occurs, like if, if you know if you change your JavaScript file or whatever, or just run ES build uh, normally, like in a you know in CI or a build process outside of development, then it is going to copy those files to your destination directory here. Again, also configurable however you would like. And what's neat about this plugin is it will not just blindly copy all of the files from the source to the destination. It is going to do an MD5 hash of each source and destination file, and it is only going to copy the files that changed. So going back to our source code over here, you know, if you did a naive version of this plugin in like two lines of code or something like that, and you just blindly copied all the files, if you made a change to your JavaScript file, it's actually going to copy, you know, all of these 20 or so static files here, and uh, that would be wildly inefficient. And we can see an example of that uh, in a second here. But before we get into that example, uh, let's take a look here maybe at uh, the ES build config file just to give a baseline of how things are set up. And just for context here, the only thing that's specific to this plugin is one, requiring it here, and then referencing it down here. Everything else about this config file is standard ES build stuff. And the only other thing that I need to point out here is, you know, this is a plugin that, that I've put into my package JSON and I happen to yarn install it. If you want to use NPM, that's fine. The readme file has instructions for both, but you know, I installed that file there, required it over here. And then we just say for ES build that we have a list of plugins here and the copy static files plugin, which could be named anything, you know, it's just a variable over there is defined over here. By default, if your directory structure is the same as mine, where you have assets for input and public for output, you actually don't need to configure anything. You can, uh, but you know, if it's completely different, which we will take a look at in a different app, it's very easy to customize the source and the destination. It's just a, a variable that you pass in over here, which we will see in a second here. But also just wanted to quickly point out about the ES build stuff. You know, these config options, it's like, well, are we going to minify a source map or, you know, watch things? This is just, you know, a little bit of logic that says, you know, in production, I want to minify and stuff. I don't want a source map. I don't want to watch, but for development, I do want these things. And, you know, this is just um, very basic to make sure that we see some output when our JavaScript changes. But I just wanted to quickly point out this stuff here, like this entry point where, uh, again, this config file is in this assets directory. So the JavaScript input is relative to that. So that's this uh, file over here. And then the output for that is going to be in public down here. So we had to go back one directory because we're in the assets directory, then public and over here. And I only bring that up because we're about to look at a different code example that has slightly different directory structure. And this is like the most simple or base case of everything. So yeah, 
But uh, once we have all that set up, then things work. And we're going to see a working copy of this uh, in basically two seconds. So I have this example Dockerized Phoenix app running uh, in a different tab over here. And uh, if I reload here, you can ignore what you just saw because I wanted to test something uh, before recording the video. But this application is up and running. And the reason I'm choosing to use Phoenix in this video instead of Flask is because Phoenix has a, a live reload server, which is really nice in development, where if you change a file you know, in Vim or whatever code editor that you have, and save it, then Live Reload is going to kick in and reload the browser for you without you actually having to reload the browser. And it's going to demonstrate um, the differences between what happens when you copy files without doing an MD5 comparison versus with. And for that, let me jump to the code base here for Phoenix. And we're going to take a look here at the ES build config file, which, by the way, is also in this assets directory over here, very, very similar to the Flask one. Now, there is a little bit of a difference here for the output directory with Phoenix, because uh, with Phoenix, we actually want to go back one directory into priv static. So uh, however you want to pronounce that, priv static, private, basically, I think. But um, this public directory that uh, was in Flask over here is basically the same thing here, but it's in priv static. And uh, I just put that into a variable here in this ES build config file just to customize where that happens. And then we just define it down here as a custom option to this plugin that we have here, copy static files. We can customize the destination. It's also being reused over here just so we don't need to duplicate this path twice. And we can also customize the source directory, but we don't have to do it here. But yeah, yeah, that's in the readme file. But going back to uh, here, it's all running in Docker. We just took a look at it in the browser. Let me go to my app.js file and we'll do uh, a console log hello here. Save the file. Go to the browser. I didn't really do anything with my hands. Like immediately though, we saw the, the hello, right? And uh, just to be clear again, you know, one, two, three, save file to the browser, one, two, three, and it got live reloaded, perfect. And uh, if we take a look here at the output of these containers, then we can see live reload kicked in and it noticed it changed on the JavaScript file as well as the CSS. Now, I don't know why ESBuild is triggering um, a live reload for the CSS, that's like, to be determined on a different video. And I don't know if it's a bug or something I'm doing wrong or whatever, but we can see here that very little changed, right? That's because the copy plugin that we were just looking at over here is very smart about this, right? By default, it's gonna do that MD5 um, checking for you. Now, other things that you could potentially configure for this plugin, they're all defined here, by the way, in this readme file down here below. Because, and we're about to go into the after of, you know, what happens when you don't filter, but under the hood, this, copy static files is really just using Node's built-in you know, copy sync function that's available in Node's standard library, no external dependencies. So anything that you can configure with that function, so the source, the destination, and all this other stuff here is available to configure with this plugin here. And uh, <clears throat> sorry, my throat is getting dry here. All I did was copy paste this from Node's documentation. So like, you know, the source path to copy or the destination path to copy to, you know, we can choose to recursively copy directories or not. We can preserve the timestamps, whether or not we want them or not. And by the way, these are all the default values uh, defined up here. So if you don't override them, then we're going to get these by default. So that's why we're able to, you know, do the source and destination in the Flask example without even defining anything. Now, the really important one though here is the filter, filter one. So this one actually takes a function as an argument and you need to return true to copy the item or false to ignore it. So we can actually customize the filter function, what's happening here, basically bypass doing the MD5 comparison that's built into the plugin itself and use something different. And we can do that by uh, just you know going here, saying that we want to pass in our own function that's gonna just return true, basically bypassing uh, all the filtering, because just as, as a reminder here, you know, if returning true means to actually do the copy. So then we can just define a, an, an anonymous function here, and that is going to just return true, and that's it. So now I'm just gonna restart everything here because we're changing the ES build config file. So we need to reload the ES build watcher. So in this case, uh, since I'm using Docker, just killed it and then re up everything here and blah, blah, blah. Everything is starting, cool. And then if I go to here and uh, reload the page here, we can see our hello one, two, three and our, our output looks good, right? Now, let me jump back to that app.js file and let's bring this back to just like, you know, a whole bunch of A's or something. Save the file, back to the browser. There's a live reload. But if we take a look here at the output, look at that. There's like a million different outputs of all these static files here because right now every single copy or every single file just got copied over even though we just changed one little line in our JavaScript. So yeah, that's the power of doing the MD5 comparison here because in case you don't know how it works, uh, MD5 hash is basically, you're gonna get the same output 
if you give it the same input. So if this file gets a value of like ABC123, like some hash or something, and it doesn't change, and you run uh, MD5 hash against it, you're gonna get the ABC123. But if you change the value of it, then you know, you're gonna get a different MD5 hash, uh, and then it is going to get copied over. You know, in this case, it copied all of them over. But yeah, that's basically how this works. And uh, let me actually revert this back to the original, just so I don't forget. And I think that is all the changes there for that one. Let me shut this down because we're done looking at some examples here. But yeah, going back to the README file here. Yeah, if you're interested in using the plugin, that's basically how it works. You know, you can read the why part on your own. It's, it summarizes what we just went over here. And uh, also one thing to point out, yeah, no third-party dependencies, just using a couple of functions from Node Standard Library, which I think is really nice because, yeah, I want my build times to do a yarn install to be as fast as possible. And all these example Docker, uh, Dockerized applications, they now finish a yarn install in about 10 seconds or less. So moving over to ES build has been uh, absolutely fantastic. And again, you know, this is stuff that we went over before uh, on video. Uh, installation, if you want to install it, you can just yarn install, ES build, copy static files like this, or if you want to use npm instead, then you can just copy paste that. And it is available on you know npmjs.com here uh, as of a couple of days ago. Uh, readme file is up here, a little bit out of sync for what's in the repo because I changed some stuff, uh, just you know minor documentation. And uh, yeah, getting started guide, very, very simple ES build config file. Instead of using all those variables that we saw before, just hard coded them in here. We can see same stuff though, right? Just uh, import the file and then uh, use the plugin here. And then for configuration, we went over some of this before here. Yeah, these are all uh, what you're getting by default. Otherwise, if you want to customize them, you can customize them. And this just walks through how you can customize the filter function. Yeah, by default, um, yeah, it's going to filter out or skip copying any files that haven't changed. And uh, we can, you know, if you wanted to play around with this on your own, you can even do a different strategy. Like instead of returning true, which is going to copy everything, then, you know, maybe you can do like a an M time comparison, like the modify time instead of it doing an MD5 hash. And yeah, basically it's limitless. And a little bit of information about me. I have a site, a couple hundred blog posts, videos, etc. So now let's wrap things up and take a look here at the source code to the plugin itself. And we're not going to spend a lot of time here, but I just wanted to very, very briefly cover this one. You know, it's a very small amount of code, 50 lines of code. A lot of them, or not a lot of them, but you know, a good 10% of that almost is uh, just defining defaults for uh, things that you can configure here. But you know, going back to that filter function, yeah, here's a, the actual built-in filter function. And really at the end of the day, it just returns true or false based on whether or not these MD5 hashes for the source and destination match. And there's also a little bit of extra logic here to return true, you know, if the uh, destination file doesn't exist or it happens to be a directory. Uh, we always want that to return true in those cases there. And uh, this just calls another function here, get file digest. And then, uh, yeah, that takes a path here. There's very similar check here to make sure we're dealing with a file that exists. And if it does, then we take that path here and we call another function called get digest. And this is actually going to return uh, the string representation of an MD5 hash, right? That 32 characters, like, you know, ABC, one, two, three, whatever, 32 characters long, just uses the built-in crypto module from node here and uh, it gets the digest. And that's, you know, a majority of the code, right? Like the first like 30 something lines is basically that. And then at the very, very bottom here is, uh, yeah, the actual ES build plugin. And you know, if you Googled around for like ES build plugin API, you'll find some really good examples in their documentation. So things like build, it's sort of hand wavy for me still. Like, I don't even know, like I just literally took their example plugin, copy pasted it and put in my own custom logic. And uh, that's how we ended up here. So, you know, when it comes to options, we can just uh, optionally pass in an object with whatever, you know, values that we want. In this case, you know, if the option source doesn't exist, then it's going to fall back to using this one. And that's the source there. And, uh, yeah, that ends up being referenced over here. And then for these other ones here, you know, like the force and preserve timestamps, since these are nice little one-liners, I, I just dropped them in there without making a separate variable for them. I, I just wanted to keep this a little bit shorter without getting long like that. So just a little bit of refactoring to make things look nicely. Now, uh, this does say build dot on end, and you might be wondering, and, and this is something that we didn't cover before, but if you actually were to add a new static file. So I already killed the server here, but uh, it's not really important. But you know, if I were to go into here and add, you know, like a food, a text file or whatever here, this is not gonna like be immediately picked up and wind up in your output directory here, the public one, because it's not watching this static directory for changes. It is watching um, your JavaScript for changes. So if you were to add a new file or, you know, modify one of these static files, all you actually have to do is just save 
your JavaScript file, and that will copy it over here to the destination directory, and you would be good to go. So that is going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, if you want to check it out, again, just as a reminder here, you can either Yarn install or NPM install it. If you have any questions about this plugin, let me know in the comments below, or you know, if you find any issues or a way to improve it, feel free to open an issue or a pull request. And on that note, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.